If you have more than one nucleus, they're called nuclei. Fusion is the process of combining light nuclei. We've come to the skateboard park to find out how it's possible to overcome the electric repulsive force that wants to keep two positively charged nuclei apart. When they're far apart, the particles in the nucleus repel each other. But when they get close enough for the nuclear force to take over, they'll stick together or fuse into a larger nucleus. These skateboarders illustrate the idea. We can imagine that they're both positively charged, like the nuclei in atoms. Here they come toward each other, but they don't have enough speed to climb the hill. The hill acts just like the electrical force of repulsion between protons to keep the skaters apart. But if they have more speed, they can climb the hill, overcome the forces keeping them apart, and if they were nuclei, fuse together. Since most scientists are not very good skateboarders, they use an energy diagram to help them visualize the fusion process. Again, the long-range electrical force creates a hill or barrier between the two nearby nuclei. The hill gets steeper and steeper as the particles get closer to one another. Without enough speed, the particles can't climb the hill and so roll back down. To overcome their mutual repulsion, the positively charged nuclei need to be moving very fast. Then, if they do manage to get close enough, the nuclear force will take over and fuse them together. This combining of nuclei is called a nuclear reaction, in contrast to the more common chemical reactions we see every day. In this fire, carbon atoms in the wood are being joined with oxygen atoms in the air to form molecules of carbon dioxide, or CO2. Any process in which atoms rearrange to form different molecules, like joining oxygen and carbon to form CO2, is called a chemical reaction. In contrast to the chemical reaction in the fire, the fire of the sun is a nuclear reaction called fusion. Any process in which atomic nuclei are rearranged to form different atoms is called a nuclear reaction. Fusion is the process of combining the nuclei of two light atoms to form a heavier one. This reaction releases energy that we can harness to generate electricity. Another type of nuclear reaction is the fission reaction. It's important to realize that the fusion reaction is the opposite of the fission reaction. Fission, which powers present-day nuclear power plants, is the process of splitting a heavy nucleus into two lighter nuclei. Many different light nuclei can fuse and release energy. The easiest fusion reaction to make work is called the DT reaction. Let's take a closer look. DT stands for deuterium and tritium and both are isotopes of hydrogen. Isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons in their nucleus but a different number of neutrons. The hydrogen in water comes in three different isotopes. Common hydrogen with a single proton, deuterium with a proton and a neutron, and tritium with a proton and two neutrons. When you drink a glass of water, you'd never notice the difference. But scientists have discovered that these isotopes of hydrogen work really well as fusion fuel. In fusion, as with our skateboarders, when a deuterium nucleus and a tritium nucleus get close enough together that the strong nuclear force is effective, instantly all of the nucleons, the particles that make up the nucleus of the atom, bond together to form a temporary nucleus with two protons and three neutrons. This new nucleus is very unstable and it quickly disintegrates into two particles a helium nucleus or alpha particle and a free neutron. We started with hydrogen and ended up with helium. That's the same gas that they use in blimps and party balloons to make them lighter than air. But there's a bit of a mystery because when the reaction is done something is missing. 
if we weigh the deuterium and tritium nuclei before their fusion and the helium and neutron that are left after the fusion, we find that despite the fact that the total number of neutrons and protons has remained the same, some of the original mass has been lost. This missing mass has been converted into energy, the kinetic energy of motion of the neutron and the helium. Using Einstein's famous formula, E equals mc squared, we can calculate how much energy was released in this one fusion reaction. Each individual fusion reaction, like the one we just looked at, releases about a million times more energy than the energy released in each individual chemical reaction in an ordinary wood fire. And unlike wood, oil, or other chemical fuels, there's an almost limitless supply of fusion fuel available to every person, culture, or nation on Earth in the seawater that makes up the oceans. The chemical formula for the water molecule is H2O. That means that for every water molecule, there are two hydrogen atoms. About one in every 6,000 hydrogen nuclei has the extra neutron to make it deuterium. So, even though the energy released in each fusion reaction is tiny, there are so many deuterium nuclei in normal water that if we took all the deuterium from the top of one inch of San Diego Bay and used it for fusion fuel, we could provide enough energy to run the city of San Diego for 50 years. The deuterium in the top one inch of the world's oceans could supply the energy requirements of our planet for 100,000 years at the present rate of consumption. Since we would only need one out of every 6,000 hydrogen atoms, we'll never notice a change in the oceans. The tritium necessary for the DT reaction is easily obtained from a nuclear reaction with the element lithium. So you can see, success at developing fusion power would be very important for the world. With such an abundant supply of fusion fuel, and so many people trying to make fusion energy happen, why don't we have fusion power plants on Earth to generate our electricity already? Well, there are a number of technical obstacles that make fusion difficult. If we remember the skateboarders, they needed enough speed to be able to climb the hill and join together. With nuclear particles, increasing their average speed so that fusion can occur means increasing their temperature, since hot particles are moving faster than cold ones. For one common fusion reaction, we know that the temperature required for fusion is about 100 million degrees Celsius, which is even hotter than the center of the sun. At such high temperatures, the atoms are moving so fast and colliding with such force that molecules are broken apart and even the electrons are stripped away from their nuclei. This means that the nuclei, or ions, and the electrons in the deuterium-tritium fuel mixture of a fusion power plant are flying around, crashing into each other without any of the normal, orderly atomic structure at all. A mixture like this is called a plasma, the fourth state of matter, along with gases, liquids, and solids. By the way, the plasma of physics is not connected in any way with the more familiar blood plasma used in hospitals. They just happen to have the same name. Actually, we see plasmas all the time. The fluorescent lights you're probably sitting under right now contain minute quantities of plasma. Plasma also occurs in neon signs, arc welding, and in nature, in lightning.